We as business owners, creatives, dreamers, we're already doing the work. We just need to show it. I think a lot of like who we are comes across whether we want it or not in how we conduct our business. Your fear of showing up and your fear of being cringe is actually creating a barrier between you and your dream clients. Your clients are everybody around you. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Accidental CEO Podcast. We have the amazing Kiana Marie here with me today. Did I say your name correctly? Yes, yes, it's Kiana. Yep, absolutely. Love it. And uh, she's going to talk to us a little bit about content creation and being present, showing up, and a few more things related to that. But I'd love to have her introduce herself and just tell us a little bit about what you do now, where are you at, and all of that good stuff. Yes, absolutely. Thank you for letting me join this conversation. Uh, my name is Kiana. I'm a traveling photographer based here in Arizona, and I am currently offering a ton of content creation coaching, brand photography, and content photography. I feel like there are so many business owners that are creating these incredible experiences in person, but then when it comes to uh, actually showing up online, there's a disconnect. So yeah. I love capturing that magic for you. And I've been a wedding photographer for over 15 years and I am making this pivot. Like I feel like a lot of us are ah. just kind of expanding and growing and trying new things. And so I have lots of, lots of years of experience with photography. I love it. When did you start making a transition into education? Yes. So it's been quite a few years. I'd say I've naturally kind of been doing this over the last five or six years. Mm -hmm. And then I quickly realized, you know what, like, this is fun. And I feel like more people need to know about this, just, just fun ways of showing up online and being truly authentic. So I just kind of ran with it. And here we are today. That's good. You found a way to kind of niche down a little bit into the education arena. I feel like there's there's obviously a lot of us out there. There's a lot of education, which I don't think is necessarily a bad thing because people are so different. Like people who might learn really well from you might not learn really well from me and vice versa. So because we are so different, the way we teach, even though we're, we might be talking about the same kind of content, um, it helps you connect with different people so everybody can have somebody to go to. So I love that. Absolutely. Tell us a little bit about, did you have a, a life before photography, before even wedding photography? How did you end up owning your own business? How to, was your journey to uh, entrepreneurship? Yes, I love this question because it always kind of takes people back by surprise. So I actually started my photography journey on the track. I used to photograph my brother racing motorcycles and yeah. that's really where it started. This was, and I'm totally dating and aging myself, but this was pre Snapchat, pre Instagram, even pre Facebook where nobody was seeing the stuff online. These were literally home videos and like Polaroid photos and photos with my power shot, my little Canon power shot, right? Like that's how far this goes mm -hmm. back. And I quickly realized not only just taking really fun, evil Knievel jumps of my brother in the backyard and having him share that with his friends at school, but then on the track racing up and down the state of California, I quickly realized how much I loved not only taking those action photos of the actual racing, but I really love what was going on in the pits. And if you're familiar with the racing kind of world, the pits are where, right, like the trucks are, the trailers, the barbecue pits, the bikes, all of the kind of like the, the pit crew. Yeah. And that's truly what I loved photographing. I loved photographing just the men tinkering on the bikes, um, people just kind of like mingling and getting to know each other. And if you know the racing community, they mm -hmm. literally will give you a tire off their bike if you need it, right? Like they're they're very loving, they're very friendly, and it's actually a really awesome family event, like a family community. Yeah. And so that's when I realized, wait a second, there's actually magic, like looking back in hindsight of capturing the behind the scenes, and it started way back then. And so just to fast forward, um, after that kind of breaking point, I started photographing my friends for high school senior mm -hmm. stuff family portraits, weddings, and it just kind of evolved from there. That's so sweet. I love that story. I definitely connect with that. I started taking some pictures in the sports arena. Like I was an athlete before 
I even came to this country and I've always loved capturing the athletes and like in action, but also the people watching, just like you talk about the, the what's going on kind of around the action and capturing that, you know, just the, the com- camaraderie of the people watching and the connection and the community. So, um, and I think a lot of, I always tell people wedding photography, which is probably why a lot of us ended up in wedding photography after a while is you get a little bit of everything in there. You have some family picture, uh, you know, parts in there. You have some product photography with the details. Then you have your couples. Then you have a lot of that candid stuff that happens in like sports and other areas of photography. So it's kind of a little bit put together um, from all the genres of photography goes and happen into the wedding day. Absolutely. And I think that that's what makes a very seasoned and very experienced photographer. It's not always how many years you've been doing your niche, right? Like doing weddings Mm -hmm. or doing families or products or brands. What have you been doing in your real life to get to these experiences, to know how to work with people, to know how to be reliable and be super resourceful? That's why I love coaching and teaching is because it's not always just that individual niche. It's like, Mm -hmm. wait a minute, like, how are you a well-rounded person that's going to make your business thrive? Yeah, that's perfect. Um, Tell me a little bit about when did you have that realization that you needed to be present and you needed to be sharing things often about your business and maybe about yourself too, to be able to be found by your client? Yes. Well, when I first started, everything was word of mouth. I grew up in a really big city that felt like a small town in Northern California. And it was a moment when I realized, remember back in the day, we used to say, if you didn't take a picture at the gym, it didn't happen, right? Right. Like, <laughs> kind of had that notion or like, if you didn't eat this delicious meal, like you're, you made it up, right? And so I think that's what was happening is I was creating these incredible experiences and I was having so much fun capturing my family and my friends. But after a while, that network like hit a wall and I really, I really couldn't find new clients because all of my family and friends were burnt out on pictures, <laughs> right? Like they, yeah, You're they done were modeling for you. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And so I quickly realized, okay, well, how can I get this word of mouth? How can I build this trust? And that's when social media, I kind of grew up with social media, really started coming together. And I started realizing, oh, I just need to show what I'm doing. That's awesome. Do you um, make a point to also share a little bit of your day to day as a person? Because I know we're really good sometimes at sharing maybe business sides of things or or the, the behind the scenes, but but then we forget to sometimes relate to our clients. So do you, is that something that you do and you teach uh, when you're coaching and, and how do you kind of guide your clients to do that in a tasteful way? <laughs> yes, absolutely. So I'm a huge, huge fan of really sharing like a living brand. I love to talk about that where you are incorporating your business and your daily life because I feel like a lot of us go into business because we have kind of stumbled into this hobby. We quickly realize, oh my gosh, I can make money doing this. But then you think, oh, but this is actually a business. I can get paid to do this and I need to show up being professional. So there is a fine line between just throwing your entire life on the internet, right? Like we don't yeah. want to share. I feel like, you know, those oversharers, but then you also can see people online that are doing it really well, where they're blending their content with who they are as a person and who they are as a business owner, right? And so I love that. I love teaching business owners that it's absolutely okay to share pieces of your life, the things that are of interest to you, maybe even some of the things you don't like, right? Mm -hmm. And um, I love that because what it does is it actually builds a huge audience of raving fans for you. When we are only posting about our one specific niche, or a certain product or a certain offer that we have, when one day we decide to no longer offer that product, and if you haven't been keeping up with sharing who you are as a person and sharing your goals and your dreams, that's how you're going to get a lot of fall off. Like that's how you're going to get a lot of like bandwagon, like fans instead of those like diehard fans that just want to see you succeed no matter what you do. Exactly. I think a lot of like who we are comes across whether we want it or not in how we conduct our business, right? So I think if you kind of 
keep along those lines of like your values and things that you believe and things you like and don't like and why you make the choices that you make that will translate into oh they're still related to the job is to relate it to what they're talking about. So you're not sharing things that are unnecessary to be sharing and not, mm-hmm. lo- oh, not oversharing, like you said. So there's there's a fine line, but there's still a lot that can be shared and it can help you be present and connect with your ideal client if you're making an effort to think about those things. So mm-hmm. for those people that don't necessarily have that mindset of like sharing and sharing the behind the scenes and sharing some of their life, what are some of the quick things that they can think about starting to share or showing up, they can help to show you that can help them show up uh, more often to their clients. Yes, absolutely. I love this question. So I love to kind of break this down. I'm a very visual person, obviously as photographers, we can relate. And I just would love to share kind of like a blanket, bold statement, like an umbrella of the secret really is just capturing behind the scenes. We as business owners, creatives, dreamers, we're already doing the work. We just need to show it, right? We going kind of going back to what we mentioned before about creating that word of mouth. We just need to prove our value. We need to prove that we're in business, that we're booked and busy, right? And the easiest way to do that as far as content creation is just capturing behind the scenes. So I have two really easy kind of thought processes because this is how my brain works with lists. So I'm excited to share some lists with you today. And yeah. And so the first one is think of an invitation. And I want you to think when I say invitation, think of think of a moment when you were in the third grade and you got invited to a birthday party, right? And on that invitation, there was the words, literally, it was just listed. It's just who, what, when, and where. Okay. So like think of your invitation list to your business. You're inviting your dream clients to come to your business, right? So who is it for, right? Like who are you and what are you doing, right? Like what services are you offering? What services are you selling? Where are you located? Are you willing to get on an airplane? I know some of us are so quick to say, oh yes, my bags are packed. I'm going anywhere. <laughs> but de- but depending on the season of your life, yeah. maybe you don't want to go anywhere that's farther than an hour drive from your home, depending on mm-hmm. your cats, your pets, your family, or whatever you have going on that season. Maybe traveling just isn't in the cards right now. So we need to make sure that we're very, very open and just un- understanding where you're actually offering these services and your clients, these straight Strangers online need to know that, right? And then, of course, when for following up on the invitation list is when does your dream client know is the like know that they're the best fit for you? When do they know that they need to contact you? I know a lot of us are wedding photographers, right? And so I love to educate photographers. Hey, okay, we just came off of a really big holiday season. A lot of new rings have been popping up, right? Our Instagram feeds are blinged out right now. It's like what I like to say. So now we should be educating on, hey, now's actually a really great time to book us, right? So that's part of that invitation list of who, what, when, and where. And then, of course, the second part to this is the client experience. So I love to break down your client experience from the moment you get that initial either DM or email in your uh, like inquiry form all the way down to the final deliverable. And think about that, right? Like, because I feel like just like you mentioned before, it can be really overwhelming just coming up with content and where do I begin and what do I do? But if you can pull apart your client experience Mm -hmm. and just think about those moments and those touch points that you have with clients, that right there could help you create dozens of content pieces that your dream clients are going to appreciate because they're going to know what's coming. Your current clients are going to be so grateful that you have this information for them. So you're already answering questions they didn't even know they had to ask. And then your past clients are also seeing this. Maybe you are kind of regurgitating or repurposing. That's probably a better word. (laughs) Repurposing your content. And they're going to see themselves pop up in your content. And they'll be so happy to share because now you are staying top of mind. And I love that. I love how the client experience hits all those points, right? Your past, current and dream clients Mm -hmm. in just one swoop of content creation. That's great. So the invitation kind of strategy for content creation. I love that. Very good tangible tips that you guys can go on and apply like today, make a list, answer those questions. And then it's definitely a huge thing to share about your client experience. I feel like we 
you kind of just assume that people know what happens when they're going to book, you know, so in our case, a photographer or whatever services they offer if you're a web designer or event planner but we kind of just assume that people know what's going to happen and my my past life was in healthcare and i've learned really early in that training that people have no idea what to expect on that initial examination right you're spending an hour with them they don't know how they need to get dressed they don't know what you're going to do or are you going to have to move are you just going to ask questions so the first thing we always did was to Take the first few minutes to have a conversation and explain, hey, this is what's going to happen today. We're going to talk a little bit first. I'm going to gather some information. Then I'm going to do an examination. I'm going to make you move. I'm going to test your strength and how much you can move. We're going to talk about, uh, then we're going to put a plan together, how we're going to address your problem. Um, and then we're going to have, you know, we're going to have these exercises that we're going to be working on for this amount of time. And this is the result that we expect. And we forget to do stuff like that on any other service-based industry, I feel like. We're just expecting people to know that how, how they get to book you. Do they go to your website? Do you have to... Do you do an in-person consultation? Do you do a phone consultation? Like people do different things. Do you require a 50% deposit? Is it a flat fee deposit? Like we all, again, do different things. So are you letting your client know specifically how to get to you? What does the process look like? What are they going to get from working with you? And even the language that we use, sometimes we feel like we know what we're talking. We're talking about shooting and you know, <laughs> things that for us is a normal language. But for people that are out there ready to hire you, they have no idea what you're talking about. So just taking a step back and explaining and, and taking them through that experience makes a huge difference on making them feel comfortable uh, when it's time to give that money to you. So, mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely. And I'm such a firm believer in being proactive about this, right? Like you said, we know what's going on. This is our mm -hmm. everyday when for many of our clients, it's once in a lifetime. And so yeah. we can absolutely be really proactive about being that resource, being that educational source and truly being their friend, right? I mean, think about it. Like, some of our best friends, like we always go to them for advice, right? If they've, if they've maybe even married before us or they've had a child before us or they've raised a certain, you know, a dog and they brought a puppy home, you know that you're like, they're on speed dial because you trust them yeah. because they're your friend and they'll tell you what to expect. And that's exactly how we should be running our businesses for strangers online that can potentially be our dream clients. Exactly. Tell us a little bit of some of the biggest misconceptions about showing up in your oh, yes. social media or showing up for your business. I think the biggest misconception is that people think they're going to be annoying. When I show up, I don't like to hear my voice. When I show up, I feel like I'm just repeating myself over and over again. Like these are all just big misconceptions. And I feel like your fear of showing up and your fear of being cringe is actually creating a barrier between you and your dream clients. And so I want to help you feel that confidence to show up online, truly shine, be authentically yourself and like crush these limiting beliefs. Right. And it's just insane to me how we think that we are just on repeat but even the people in our following have no idea, like, yeah. oh, they even posted, right? I think it's like less than 3% now. I know a lot of the big social media platforms, you have to pay to play. So if we're organically getting that reach, it's difficult. And so you absolutely have to constantly be reintroducing yourself, showing up, explaining your message, explaining your, your mission and talking about your sales. I mean, I have to call you out right now. If you're listening, like, I really want to ask you, when was the last time you posted exactly what you sell or exactly what are in your packages or collections as a photographer or business owner? Do you, there's like, does your audience even really know? Do you have an updated version? We are constantly growing and expanding. And so I think a misconception for many of us is coming off as annoying. And I just got to tell you, like your dream clients are praying for you. So you have to show up for them to even see you. Exactly. And I have, yeah. And I have one more misconception that I, I say all the time. And I feel, especially with photographers, because we feel like once we post something, like we kind of like, you know, clap our hands, like, whew, we did it, you know, like we did it. And that's a moment to be proud of. But I think another misconception is that we believe that our dream clients find us online 
they look at our website, they maybe check out our socials, maybe look at some reviews, and then they decide not to book with us when in reality, they don't even know you exist yet. So that I think is a huge misconception where we're kind of standing on that thinking, oh no, like they didn't pick me because somebody else is better. Somebody else, um, you know, has a different style than me. And those things may be true, but were you even showing up online for them to make that decision in the first place? Like, let's go. I love that concept. That's such a very clear way to think about it because we are very easy to jump to conclusions mm -hmm. to just say, oh, maybe they didn't have the budget or maybe it was just like they didn't like my pictures, but are they even finding you? So what mm -hmm. a what a great thing to start thinking about when it comes to showing up. Um, and just like you said, I know from just friends of mine that we follow each other all the time. We watch each other's stories and we'll be talking. You're like, oh, yeah, we just did that. I was like, really? Like, how, when? They're like, I just posted yesterday. I'm like, I didn't even, how did I miss that? And like stuff that I look at all the time. So exactly. don't be afraid of being there over and over talking about what you do repeating, repurposing content and being present. And I think the other thing that I hear a lot about when it comes to showing up and why people choose not to a lot of times is they feel like they need to be perfectly put together, makeup done, hair perfectly on place, and, and the background needs to be amazing and the lighting needs to be amazing. Otherwise, I'm not going to be showing up. So let's talk about that a little bit more. Yeah, I love the real. I love the real. And you know, it's funny. I always love kind of going back to our friends. I love this imp like impression or kind of like this visual. I'm such a storyteller. Um, but I want you to think about your closest friends, right? If you walked into your best friend's house right now and it was immaculate, like there wasn't anything on the counter, everything was wiped clean, everything had a place, would you look at her and be like, what the heck, right? Like you would think oh, wow, like I can't relate to this. Like, do you, you must be so rich that you have a house cleaner and does anybody live here? <laughs> right, like you're looking around. <laughs> right, but it's the best friends where you walk in that garage door and you plop your bag on the couch and you pour yourself a glass of water or a glass of wine and you just start chatting and there's dishes in the sink and it's just, it's just real, right? Like, it's just like, oh, wow, you're a real human and this is why we're best friends. You're finding those relatable moments. Now, I do know, that when it comes to showing up online and sharing your authentic self, like it can be scary, right? Whether we don't have a full mm -hmm. face of makeup, whether we are trying to be bold and no longer use filters, but there's something so powerful about being exactly who you are, not only so your clients and your dream clients can find you and resonate with you, but then also too, when you're showing up, you don't want to catfish your clients, right? You don't want to be like this <laughs> perceived person that is so put together and so perfect that when you go to show up for a mini session or on a wedding day or meet up with them for a client consultation in person. If anybody's doing those anymore, you don't want to be like, oh, hey, this is me. And you're, you know, you got your top knot in and you're not quite put together. And maybe you have leggings on with tennis shoes. Like there's nothing wrong with that. Like that's completely who you are, but we have to show up as that person. Yes, that it's huge. I love it. Um, I know you have a stance about there's no need to niche down. So that is definitely not a common message that we hear there. I definitely see some people have that kind of stance that you have, but I would love to hear your point of view of why, why you feel like people don't need to niche down. Absolutely. Well, okay. This can be very polarizing and so many different opinions, right? But I want you to consider if you, photography is your business, then that's your niche, right? You take photographs. And when you pull apart the fabric or the lines that connects all of your clients, your clients just want to feel their best. They want to look their best. They want to have a really fun experience that you're documenting. So it doesn't matter if you're a wedding photographer, boudoir, family, newborn. Now, don't get me wrong. I know that there are niche photographers that are just excellent in what they do. And and I know, for example, like I know some of my photography friends that are newborn photographers, they do. I'm totally dating myself too, but the Ann Gettys photography, like the origami babies yeah. where, right, like they're photoshopping a five composite image, right, into <laughs> one. Like that's just so much work. And they're, they're talented. They're creative. Like that's definitely a referral for me. So I want to make that blanket statement that just because I'm not niching down doesn't mean that I'm an expert and the best at every single niche. Mm -hmm. But I will say this. 
because I did not niche down, meaning I did not turn away other types of photography genres or other photo opportunities, my business has been able to expand out of state. My business has been pandemic proof. I've been able to survive an entire pandemic. When 2020 hit, right? I mean, weddings were squashed. Like literally the government told me that I was like not allowed to work, right? I was not essential. And I'm sorry, but my livelihood, my business and putting food on the table and paying my bills is essential. So (laughs) yes, for all of us, like it's not just a me thing. Like this is an industry standard and just a human right to work, right? And so I'm just sharing that this is why I don't specifically niche down. Now, I will have a caveat and share. I think it's important to promote and to really find a focus with your photography, right? Mm -hmm. So right now, I've completely kind of rebranded and I'm focusing more on content creation, content coaching, and branding photography. But I have a wedding coming up March 30th, right? Like, so I don't know when this is going to be released, but like I have a couple weddings this year, even into 2024, that I'm not specifically marketing for, right? I'm kind of closing that chapter for me, but I'm not making a huge statement saying I am no longer a wedding photographer and deleting all my stuff because who knows? I may want to pick up that camera again, maybe Mm -hmm. one when and if I have children when they're in high school or something and I can do a couple of year, like a couple of year, that's when I can pick that back up again. So I feel like there's this misconception. And I think a lot of mentors are always saying niche down, only offer one, be the expert. And I think that's incredible. But at the end of the day, we're photographers. I think sometimes we get so siloed into like tunnel vision of what we do. And I'll be clear as a photographer, I'm not teaching yoga. I'm not like offering, you know, rock climbing classes. I'm yeah. not teaching canning, right? Like, right. Like all these things are hobbies and things that I love to do. I love to go kayaking. I love to go hiking. I love talking about my dog and, you know, getting her into training stuff, but mm-hmm. I'm not promoting that for my business. So I feel like there's this kind of like secret kind of, I don't know, almost shameful thing to say, oh, I'm a wedding photographer, but I also offer mini sessions and I offer headshots over here and I offer this and, oh, I also have a side job working at a coffee shop. That's okay. Like you need to be able to pay your bills and you have a skill set. So I feel like this conversation go in seven different ways, but I just want to share from my, from my own experience that not niching down completely saved my butt and helped me pay my bills. I love that. I, I I love hearing different concepts and different thoughts and things. Uh, I'm very much a a learner by nature and and I might have my way of doing things that I think it works for me. Mm -hmm. Um, but I just love hearing the, the thought process. I'm actually, so I started as this was my side gig, just making some extra money and became my full-time job. Um, Started with some families, uh, went really quickly into weddings, knowing that that's just something that I really enjoy doing. And, but I never really stopped doing the family photo shoots and the newborns Mm -hmm. and the maternities, because at the end of the day, my, I stay with my clients. I want to be their forever photographer. You know, I want you to call me when you get pregnant and Mm -hmm. you want to do a maternity session. And I want you to call me again when that baby comes and when, as you grow your family, but that doesn't mean, so the way I do things is if you go into my website, you're going to see weddings. Mm-hmm. You're going to see wedding related stuff, but I'm always talking to people. I'm at, you know, I, I'm offering my services when it comes to the family and everything. I have hidden pages on my website mm-hmm. for my family stuff. So if you go in there, you're not going to find it. But if you are looking for a family photographer, I'm going to post a link that takes mm-hmm. you directly to my family stuff. I have a separate Instagram account that has all my family stuff. So it's okay to segment things um, and still be able to be present and be on that market as like, this is my specialty. But like you said, you stay, you're still within photography, right? You, And I feel like you can be very versatile as a of somebody that does handle weddings. Like we talked about earlier, you have a little bit of different genres of photography that happen within the wedding. You, it might be hard jumping from maybe just doing headshots in a studio to doing a wedding. Uh, we know there's a transition there and it's still all photography. So I think it's, there is fluid to a certain degree and you don't, I feel like you don't, I agree with you. There's no need to like put yourself in one box, but I think there's a strategic marketing that can happen. Like when, what I think about and what I tell sometimes some of my students is when, when think about what you wanted as a, as a bride, 
If I want somebody to photograph my wedding, I want you to be really good at photographing my wedding. So I'm going to look for that person that where I can see that expertise and that I can see you showing that work. Mm -hmm. um, so it just, it's just, it's give and take and it works for different people in different ways. There's very successful people that have everything on their website. Mm -hmm. um, there's yeah. people that do what I do and have like segmented things for people to look at. And there's, you know, so we can all be winners out there. There's plenty of ways to do things. And I think it's good to share a different perspective because there might be somebody out there that is thinking, oh my gosh, I keep hearing and I have to niche down, but I, I'm really passionate about both mm -hmm. family pictures and weddings, mm -hmm. or I really love taking pictures of babies and dogs, mm -hmm. you know, so you don't, you don't have to, you don't have to fit in this one box, guys. You can definitely be multi-passionate. Yes. Yes. And I always say our cameras are just a tool, right? Let your camera work for you. Let it take you around the world. Let it introduce you to the most incredible families and business owners. So I totally agree that I love listening and kind of picking up what feels right for you. Yeah. So I wanted to give us a good example of, because people keep hearing, oh, it's important to show up, you know, to, sh you know, be present, be showing up. So give us a good example that connect the dots for you or when you were showing up maybe for something and then that turned into maybe a session or a client, how that turned into money to you? How did that translate it into money by you being present and showing up? Yes. Okay. So perfect example. Um, kind of like to backstory it, right? You're creating this client experience for people who may not know you before they even meet you, right? So whether they're coming in from referrals, whether they're kind of like checking out your Instagram, checking out your things, and the more you're authentically showing up, all that's doing is proving who you are in real life. So one of the best ways that I love to create content is actually showing up to events, whether it's an event that I host myself, whether it's a like a vendor collaboration or even just showing up to a farmer's market, for example, if mm -hmm. you don't have any like wedding fairs going on in your neighborhood, right? So when you show up to those events, I love showcasing other vendors. I love showcasing other people and making those connections. And it's crazy how I literally can show up to a farmer's market, for example, and I just make it like a challenge for myself. And I'll show up to three to five of my favorite vendors, whether it's something as cute as dog treats or gluten-free cookies or some really cool art, or I'm really into crystals and all the woo-woo stuff, right? So there's always at least one booth like that. And I love highlighting them, okay? So all I'm doing is creating little content pieces of that. And then what's happening is those people come into my world, right? And they will quickly, they'll follow me, they'll check out my stuff. And then that literally has instantly turned into bookings. So I've had quite a few people, especially after moving to a new state, that's exactly how I built my business and started making real genuine friendships was mm -hmm. showing up to these places, going to events, um, going to other women's speaking events and other educational opportunities and sharing about it. I think there's this like kind of going back to misconceptions is like, oh gosh, you know, like, oh, I have to make content and pull it out of thin air. I have to set up a tripod. I have to like take a shower and do my hair and come up with a cute little shot list and, you know, make a teleprompter of things. And although that can be very impactful and there's definitely a space for that, I'm super lazy. Okay. I love keeping content easy. And that to me is just showing up and celebrating the business owners and vendors around you tapping into, I know a lot of your audience are wedding photographers. And so, I mean, that's something that I would do on a wedding day. I would capture behind the scenes on the wedding day, make sure I'm collaborating and highlighting other vendors and that is what completely shifted my, my connection, like kind of connected the dots for me for revenue. They were instantly like, I was the favorite. I was the favorite mm -hmm. photographer in the Bay area. People would always want to reference me because they knew when I showed up, not only did I have a fun personality, they knew they would be taken care of. The shots would be gorgeous, but I also would be taking care of them, right? Like I would be getting behind the scenes of the florist, putting the final touches on the ceremony space and 
making sure that the hair and makeup artists know, hey, I'm coming in. I'm going to do a quick little behind the scenes. And oh, okay, hold on. And they they would fix their hair. They put a little lipstick on. They make sure they're smiling. And it's just something that I would do to add that touch of connection with whoever I was working with. So whether it is at the farmer's market or, you know, waiting for, to pick up your kids at school, document it, capture it, highlight people and promote others around you. And it's just going to come back to you. Just endless, endless opportunities. That's great. I always tell people your clients are everybody around you, not only the ones that paid you, but everybody, especially vendors, guys, when you think mm -hmm. about it, these are the people like your, your clients might refer one or two friends to you maybe mm -hmm. in their lifetime guess what? Those vendors that are around you on the wedding day have the possibility of sending you clients over and over and over again. So they should be treated as your clients as well. So why not take a minute or two and collaborate and create something for them? You have a gift that you can share with people of, you know, taking pictures and documenting things. Um, and I feel like that's a great opportunity to use your gift and create those meaningful connections with vendors. So that's great, great tips right there for sure. Yeah. Yes, yes. And I, I love that, especially too with, with clients. I feel like if you could switch that one word, because clients can sound really scary. So if you just say, I'm looking to make new friends, mm -hmm. oh my gosh, your entire marketing will shift because you're looking to make genuine friendships, genuine connections. You're not trying to sell to them right off the bat. And then they'll naturally want to refer you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, makes sense. So just to shake things up a little bit, let's talk about if people don't do anything, if they keep the status quo of not showing up, what would they be missing if they don't start being present and create a brand that fits their life? What would they be missing? Where would they be? What would they be living on a table um, and not gaining by just keeping the status quo? Yeah. So one of the first thing is cash flow. I'm sorry, but this is such a free way. Yes, it's your time creating content and showing up online. Um, does take an investment of your time and energy and your creativity. So I want to point that out and say it's not just free 99, right? Like it does take a little bit of energy, but you're literally stifling. Or I like to say like that image of kind of turning off the faucet, right? So you can either turn the faucet on mm -hmm. and create genuine content and just breathe life and just love into your business. Or if you decide not to, you're depending on other people to promote your business for you. And that just is not sustainable. So we have to be our own marketers. We have to show up and advertise for our own business and truly create content, not just to be seen by our, our dream clients, but like I said before, also our past clients, right? Like we need to give them a reason to talk about it. One of my favorite things to do doesn't even include showing your face or sharing your voice is to share client testimonials. So mm -hmm. I will take one of my, one of my favorite photos from a wedding day and either get a voice recording or just a quick text caption from my clients and the couple. And that right there is something that they will happily reshare, right? And so all we're doing is creating triggers. And so if you're not showing up online, you're just leaving so much money on the table. You're not setting yourself up for success. And I, and I do want to share, okay, so I actually had a perfect example of a friend of mine. She is an incredible photographer. I mean, published, award-winning. She's just so incredible. And she's been traveling around the world, documenting weddings and busy like this girl is booked and busy right but she's been so busy that she literally went almost an entire year without posting on instagram without wow. posting on social media now her business is still booming right like she's still getting inquiries from uh, wedding venue referrals she's on referral lists for things mm -hmm. but she actually reached out to me and was like kiana what's going on i'm not getting any inquiries people are asking if i'm still in business i've had brides ask if i am still offering weddings because their sister's getting married and she's like what's going on i'm so busy and i literally asked her well are you showing up online are you actually showing and like 
proving that you are of value. Because here's the thing, if you're not showing up, people just don't think you exist, right? I mean, I'm sure some of us, because I know a lot of us are online simply because we have a business. I can almost guarantee, I know a lot of us are very creative introverts that if we didn't need social media, like we'd be ghosted. Like we would be like those, those friends in high school that you never see online and they're just living their best life because they don't have any social mm -hmm. media or like online presence. Yeah. Like I feel like a lot of us secretly wish we could do that but that's exactly what it is. Like they don't exist in your brain. You don't think about them unless you run into them at a concert or at the grocery store. If you're like, you know, still in your hometown and you recognize people, right? But you have to show up online. You have to. And here's the thing. Your dream clients are praying for you. Like they want to find you. They're looking for you. They're looking for answers. And if we're not showing up for them, it's not even that they're going to go work with somebody else. It's they're not going to work with you. You have the answers for them. You're the answer to their prayers. I love it. So when you're not taking pictures or teaching people about how to show up and be amazing, what is your favorite thing to do? Yes. Oh my gosh. Take a nap. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like same. I just so We busy. have the same hobby. <laughs> I love napping. Yes. No, but for real, I love getting outside. So one of my favorite things to do is hop in the Suburban. My boyfriend, Mike, has this big white Suburban. We load the girls up, our two dogs, mm -hmm. and we just drive. Like, we'll maybe pack some food or, you know, we pick up sandwiches or some tacos or something, and we just go find the river. We just go for a drive in the desert. And to me, being in nature completes, like, just completely helps me check out it. It just helps me feel centered. It makes me feel grounded. It kind of kicks up all that creativity again. And I love that. I love getting outside. And once again, too, it's a great way to prove to my clients like, hey, I have a life. Hey, this is what I love to do when I'm not busy working. Yes, I'm a real human. And if I don't get back to that email right away, right, it's like there's, there's an element of of transparency that they can trust. Cause they'll, if I don't get back to them right away, they can check out my Instagram and say, Oh, yep. Kiana's out of service. She is out in the desert right now. Right. And so I just, I love being it's outside. So good. so good. Where are you in Arizona? So I live in Mesa and Mesa okay. is about, yeah, yeah. Are you familiar with it? I live in Yuma girl for two, the first two years of my life in the U S. Oh my gosh. So I know where Mesa is. We used to play there very often. Um, I went to Arizona Western College. Amazing. Uh, and we played there very often. So that was uh, my first impression of the United States was the desert of Arizona. <laughs> oh my gosh, there's so much more to see. <laughs> oh yes. Yeah, I've seen I've seen plenty since, but that was yes. but that was a great place to to start. There was a small little town that was very um accommodating and welcoming so it was a great place to start my my new life here I love so it. thank you so much it was so amazing so many great tips for our audience and, and things that they can apply right away which i'm very grateful for uh tell us where people can find you so they can follow you and uh, see how people should be showing up Yes, yes. So please come hang out with me on Instagram. You can find me anywhere at Kiana Marie. That's Q U I A N N A Marie. And I pop up on TikTok. TikTok is kind of like, ugh, like it's kind of all over the so place right time. now. Yeah, exactly. It's, I kind of just scroll it. I'm kind of one of those like creepy ghost scrollers. Um, but I do show up on TikTok and have some fun videos. And, uh, yeah, check out kianamarie.com for more educational resources and support. I, I truly believe that you are so incredible and more people just need to know about you. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you guys for uh, listening to us today. And we are so excited to see you on the next one. Bye, Thank everyone. Thank you. Bye.